Lazo should be number one because he's the only player in the draft that can make everybody else around him better. As you can see that with the UCLA. Why shouldn't he be number one? He's earned it. Nobody else is playing like him. Nobody else is doing what he's doing. He's selling out arenas. He's making all his players better. Why wouldn't he be number one? How do you start your franchise without that? The most astonishing development in sports that I've seen in quite a while has taken place over the last month. And our show played a small part in it only because this man opened his mouth to TMZ just about a month ago. His name, nobody knew him then, was, or is, LeVar Ball, father of three very good young basketball players who could one day be great. We're not sure especially the oldest of his sons, has got some serious potential greatness. But LeVar opened his mouth to, I believe, TMZ to start this ball rolling and basically said that his son is better than Steph Curry. Will be better, I think, than he, he amended. I, I can't keep up with everything LeVar says. And, and he finally said he's actually already better than Steph Curry. And boom, people went crazy. Lamar Ball, the, the father of the, the Ball kids down in LA, he kind of keeps making headlines and he's brought up his name a couple times in this song. Does some of the stuff he's saying bother you at all? I don't, don't want to talk about that. I wish his kids the best and I know they're going to be great NBA players. That's their job. That's it. Do you feel like he may be putting undue pressure <laughs> on you know, that team? Person should parent their kid how they feel they should. I mean, that's it. Yo, shout out to Lonzo Ball and LeVar Ball. Ain't nothing like supporting your son, man, and your son balling out right now, man. We need more fathers like you, man. Appreciate the love that you're putting out there for your boys, man. Real grown man shit. I'm buying some of the product when y'all put it out there. Billionaire boys, I'm with that. BBB, balls, whatever it's called, I'm with you. I'm with you, Mr. Ball. Ball out, Lonzo. West Coast. I just had to say that. Now we return you to your regular schedule program. That's why I hate everybody getting mad at LeVar Ball. I think I pronounced his name right, LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball is out here trying to manifest things for his motherfucking kids. What is wrong with a father saying he wants his three sons to have a billion dollar shoe deal? Even if he don't get that billion dollar shoe deal, just the fact that he shot for something that high, he going to touch something. It's all you motherfuckers out there that don't ever set any goals for yourself. All you motherfuckers out there that don't know how to dream big who knock people like LeVar Ball. And as far as LeVar Ball saying things like, in my heyday, I could beat Michael Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. Why y'all acting like y'all don't got a black father? That's how I can tell that your daddy wasn't in your motherfucking life. Because if you had a black father in your motherfucking life, you know that your black father is not going to admit to another man being better at him than anything. Okay? Period. My father right now either knows somebody who can beat Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson, or he thinks he can beat Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson himself. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then you got to think, LeVar Ball, LeVar Ball got three sons. He's not going to motherfucking tell his three sons that another man can whip him in anything. That's what a, that's what a black father does. Black fathers, man, I, I don't give a fuck what it is. Your black father going to act like he better at it. I remember my black father, I said my black father, my father told me that he used to sniff coke with Rick James and Tina Marie. I don't know if it's true or not. But he damn sure said he outsnorted them motherfuckers. That's just how black fathers are. Black fathers just are, feel like they can be better than anything. Fuego Montana says, I could be the face of Power 105. That's what he said about, he said, that's a quote LeVar Ball would say. So the fuck what? If you don't believe in yourself, who the fuck will? If you don't set crazy goals for yourself, who the fuck will? What's wrong with y'all, man? You got to be confident, especially being black or being any marginalized person in this society. We got to damn near be delusional like to make it because they tell us all the time that we can't. 
You know what I'm saying? They tell us all the things that are against us over and over and over. We know the things that are against us. Like, we know the systemic oppressions that try to suppress our motherfucking greatness. So we have to be delusional. <laughs> right? But by the way, it's not even being delusional. It's just believing in yourself. Period. Because, of course, this society is structured for us to think that we're lesser than. That's why I keep telling y'all, man. White privilege... White supremacy, white nationalism, all that shit is very real. But just because it's very real don't mean that you have to adopt a black inferiority complex. That's why you out, you see me out here screaming black privilege like a motherfucker. All right? 50% of the people are going to like me and 50% not going to like me. And that's fine with me because it's not going to stop me from doing anything. Just like people say, Lamar, you should shut up. I ain't going to shut up nothing. They should shut up. Leave me alone, let me do what I do. But if you ask me the same question over and over, I'm going to give you the same answer. Which is very positive with what I'm saying. But I'm not worried about it. They say I'm making it about myself, but everybody's coming up to me asking me the same questions. Like I said, my boy's going to play. It's not going to stop him from what I'm saying. He does his thing, I do mine. So it's not a big deal. And it's just like everybody's saying, oh, he's in it for himself. No, y'all the ones coming up to me. I ain't coming up to nobody. Like, inter interview me, please. No, I ain't doing nothing. But it's okay for people to come up and ask me anything they want because I'm going to give them a direct answer. And I ain't got to be careful with my words because ain't nobody can tell me what to do. LeVar Ball has been great for those kids, and I admire how he's gone about it. So, when he says that his kid is better than Steph Curry, <coughs> if you look in his eyes when he's saying it, he believes it with all his heart and soul. And I must tell you, the more I've watched the kid play, if, we're just ta if you listen closely to what LeVar says, when we're just talking about pure point guard, I think he's a better point guard right now than Steph is. I love Steph Curry. Fun matchup is anytime I see my son playing against somebody, like I told him from day one, it's not the passing and the uh, dribbling and the shooting that's Lonzo's forte. It's the winning. He's been winning for a long time, even since he's been little. We got a house where he's won all the time. We don't have no trophies or nothing in the house. But that doesn't justify us winning. We expect to win every time we're on that court. We're going to lose every now and then, but we're fine with that. It's just entertainment. And we treat it like entertainment. It's a passion for my boys to get out there and play anytime. So they love it. Steph, this is, this is totally off topic, but um, I was wondering if you saw the high school player that pulled up from half court, LaMelo Ball. Did you see that highlight? I did. I did. That was some confidence right there. <laughs> the fact that he made it. I, I wonder if he's done it before and missed it. And that was... It's the highlight-driven, you know, generation. So that right there was pretty, pretty unbelievable, though, um, for him to call a shot like Babe Ruth and and knock it down and act like nothing happened. Um, so shout out to him. And boom, he was coming in to do a podcast with our man Chris Broussard on Fox Sports One, and I said, hey, would he come in a little early to do Undisputed? And I got my first look up close and personal, and it was the first sort of extended public interview that LeVar Ball did. And I must tell you, I was prepared not to like him. And as I said on the air in the following segment, wow, I was impressed. I was convinced. I really liked LeVar Ball because there's no phony to LeVar Ball. There's no baloney to LeVar Ball, he just says what he thinks. This man hits nerves. This man shakes people up. This man often speaks the fearless truth. I've had only one problem with LeVar Ball. I'll get to that in just a few minutes. But the point is, when you get to look into a man's eyes on live TV, you can often see whether he's real or not. And I thought LeVar Ball was very real that day. You can take or leave his methods of raising his kids, but you can't argue with, the, with what's coming back, what the products of his, his parenting are, 
So my point is, th this is what LeVar created, and it's, it's pretty great. I think he's the best player in the tournament right now. We'll see on Friday night because the matchup is going to be basically you got three of the top nine recruits from a year ago playing for Kentucky, and you got one of the top nine recruits from a year ago playing for UCLA. But I think one is going to overcome three. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now back to LeVar Ball. After all that I hear, all that I've heard throughout my lengthy career, how many players emerged as stars in pro football, pro basketball, even pro baseball to some degree, who didn't have a father? 